Right now, I'm almost 3,000 meters high up in the Himalayas, or Himalayas, depending on where you're from. I'm Curtis Bowdy, and this is the Scope of Science, and today I want to talk about the Himalaya Mountains, which you can't really see because right now I'm literally in a cloud. That's how high up we are. And we're not even nearly <laughs> the full height of the Himalayas. Mount Everest is over 800, sorry, 8,000 and 800 meters high. Uh, it's raining again, but that's what it's like in a cloud. Hopefully at some point we'll get a clearer view because right now you can just see some trees and things. The Himalayas have a really interesting story. It starts about 130 million years ago, back when India was still connected to Africa before the continent started to drift because it, at around that time, it broke off from the rest of Africa and started to drift upwards. The tectonic plate was drifting northly. And eventually, after the extinction of the dinosaurs around 65 million years ago, 45 million years ago, it hit the Eurasian continent, hit the rest of Asia. And that collision caused the Himalayas to form. Now, when the plates collided, the India continent, the India plate, went beneath the Eurasian plate. We say it subducted. And that's because it was denser. But as it went beneath the Eurasian plate, both of the plates had a lot of rock between them that kind of got squeezed up. And that rock that's been squeezed up is the Himalayas. That's this mountain range. And so there's lots of neat features. Hopefully I'll be able to point some out along this hike. We're doing a two day hike I say we because I came to India to visit my sister and my brother-in-law who live in Delhi and we're on a little adventure here for a couple days. Um, actually, I was just taking a nap in the tent and a bunch of goats woke me up as they passed through and bumped into my tent. Uh, it was pretty funny. Anyway, the Himalayas. So the Himalayas have been around for such a long time that they've passed through three glacial periods. Uh, and they've actually, when they were formed, I mean, they reached their, their highest current, their current height about 20 million years ago. And their formation not only changed the local landscape immensely, but it actually changed the climate of India by bringing in the monsoons. The monsoons didn't exist before the Himalayas. And it also probably changed all of the cl climactic currents around the world to some extent, and definitely uh, regionally. And it makes sense if you think about it. I mean, the fact that we are in a cloud right now and it is raining is because as air rises up the mountain, its density changes and so it rains and the currents around the mountain changes so we have big impacts on the climate. Now in terms of the climate, as the earth warms, the Himalayas are being affected just like everywhere else on the planet. And in the last 40 years, the amount of melt that has happened that uh, we find in lakes, basically there's a lot of lakes that are entirely fed by snow melt from the Himalayas, and the volume of those lakes in the last 40 years has increased by 26%. So climate change is really impacting the Himalayas. Now, the Himalayas are also changing, and the mountains are getting higher every year. Mount Everest gets about half a centimeter to two centimeters higher each year, because the plates are still colliding. Now, the plates are colliding at a rate of about 58 millimeters, that's about this much, uh, per year. So India's getting smaller every year, and every year the Himalayas get a little taller. They also erode, um, but it's kind of neat to think that if you want to climb the highest mountain in the world, you should climb it after the next seismic event, after the next earthquake in the Himalayas, because those events are when there's a little thin and I'm hiking, so I'm a little out of breath. Uh, those events are when the Himalayas get a little higher. In 2008, there was a 7.9 magnitude earthquake that killed tens of thousands of people. So these mountains 
I mean, they're, they're massive and it takes a lot of force to create a majestic piece of rock like this. It's been pretty amazing to actually look at the rocks. You'll often see rocks where there are lines where they actually have been under so much heat and pressure that the rocks themselves have not only changed directions and changed their locations, but they have lines and patterns that show that movement, which is pretty amazing. Anyway, the Himalayas are amazing to me. Uh, I'm really enjoying my time here. I hope you learned some things about this mountain range that is 2,500 kilometers across and includes the highest mountain in the world and all types of weird rocks like this. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching. If you're into geology videos, I have more of those on my channel and I have more general science videos as well. If you like this one, you can like this one and subscribe for more from the scope of science. Thanks so much for watching. Mm. Okay.